So are you a golfer who in your practice is trying to hit down on the golf ball a little bit more, get your angle of attack a little bit more negative, take those divots after the ball, flight the ball a little bit lower, strike the ball a little bit better, and just get a little bit more distance with your irons. Many golfers are. In this video, we're gonna show you the correct way to do that in practice. And unfortunately, I'm gonna show you what I tend to see a lot of golfers doing incorrectly, which can often mean they get poorer results when they try and improve how they strike their irons. So welcome back to the Forest of Arden. Welcome back to this video series. This is video number two. If you haven't seen video number one, uh, I will link it up here in the corner for you to go and watch that one. Before we get into this video, if you are new to our channel, I would love you to consider subscribing. There is a link down below this video and there's also a clickable link at the end of the video if you prefer to wait for that one. So this video series is covering some of the changes that you might be making in your golf game um, and just covering some of the mistakes I see golfers doing on the range when they're trying to change their golf swing. Today is a really common one. We're talking about strike, we talk about the irons, and we're talking about the idea of hitting down. Taking divots after the golf ball, hitting down, getting more forward shuffling, compressing the ball, all these things kind of, you know, we can group these together. And it's certainly something that golfers would benefit from. And so because of that, there's a lot of golfers out there trying to do exactly just that, trying to hit down. So, very often, if I get a golfer and the only instruction that we give to them is, you're a little bit too shallow, we'd like it to be steeper, we'd like it to hit down more. What can often happen? Well, we can often see the golfer hit pulls to the left. We can often see that golfer hit shanks off the inside of the golf club. And we can often see performance just straight away get a lot worse. And there's a reason for that. If I took my setup to this golf ball, and let's say I'm a golfer who's very shallow into the golf ball. Path of the golf club, which is the direction that the golf club is taking, and angle of attack are very closely related. So if you only said to me, I want you to hit down on the golf ball, there is a very good chance that from the top, I will move the club extremely on the outside, which will allow me to get that golf club very, very steeply into the back of the golf ball. So by moving the club way too much on the outside allows me to become much steeper and do exactly as the instruction was to hit more down but my path goes left. My strike tends to get worse, and we often, as I say, we don't see shots ending up anywhere near target. So it wouldn't be uncommon to see this movement from a golfer who's been told to hit down. Uh, and that was a very, very impressive shank. That was off the inside of the shank. But you can see the kind of concept there. We come right the way over. Yes, I'm able to get the golf club to work very steeply into the ball, but it's never gonna help me on the golf course. I'm not gonna get any good performance benefits from that. So. This is a device um, that I really, really like to use for you know, a lot of my coaching. It's called the Fat Plate. Um, it's very, very simply a strike board, going to help me monitor my strike. But if we can do something in our practice to ensure we guard against those faults that we just spoke about, we can start to deliver the club more efficiently, but actually get better results, which are going to be more functional. So let me just place this kind of in position. And I'm going to take another golf ball and get myself set up. So the fat plate is really helping me see where I'm contacting the ground. And it's starting to create some real good visuals for me because I can sort of see that I want to be hitting ball, then turf, but I don't want to be hitting the board behind me. That little device on its own is going to be fantastic. But with the addition of a head cover, we can turn this into a superb drill, which is going to help you really improve your ball striking. So head covers on the outside. So I've now created a situation where the visual of that fat plate is helping me understand the idea that my golf club has got to land on the ground after the ball, but the head cover is there to make sure I don't do it in this fashion here like we demonstrated earlier in this video. This over the top move, yes, it will give me that downward attack, but it's gonna be at the expense of those things that we mentioned. So the head cover is really, really key to this drill. What I would say, if you hit a few shots and you don't hit that head cover, don't suddenly take it away and think that you don't need it. It's there for reference. We want to make sure it stays there. If you make 20 goal swings and don't hit the head cover, still leave it there because it could well be that one swing, you start to hit it and it's there for our feedback. So how do we actually strike down on the ball if we don't do it by coming over the top? Well, we really do it by shifting our pressure onto our lead side. I will link a video here for that first one in the series which is talking about how we shift pressure. But we make sure that when we're at impact, we've got weight on our lead side, we've got body rotated open, those things allow me to deliver the handle forwards, 
hit the ball and then the ground, but we do it with a good neutral club path. So let's go ahead and hit this one. Strike board in place. That's given me some good visuals. Head cover is there to make sure I don't come over the top. Ball, then the turf. Divot was after the golf ball. Head cover stayed in place. My divot line is pretty good. Everything about that goal scene gives me excellent feedback. The strike felt good. The head cover wasn't disturbed. I get some really good feedback. So I've hit down, but I've done it in the correct way. So important that we understand the information that we're getting, we understand how to process that and how to apply it to the goal sink. Like I said right at the start of the video, if your only sort of bit of instruction is hit down on the golf ball, there are multiple different ways you could do that. You know, you could stand there and just put the ball back in your stance. You could, as we said, bring it over the top and strike down. So, you know, yes, we want some information about what we're trying to do in our goal sink, but we have to be a little bit more, we have to understand that information a little bit more and understand how to apply it to your goal sink in the correct way. And hopefully this video series is helping you do that a little bit more. There's a very good chance that a lot of you will be trying to hit down. I really hope that some of the information in this video is going to help you do that a little bit better uh, and make 2019 a better goal season for you in terms of your golf. Right, thank you very much for watching. Let's make sure you stay tuned for the last three videos. Um, again, covering some of the things I see golfers doing incorrectly during practice. But if you did like the video, let me know in the comments box. Give it a thumbs up. And as I said right at the start, if you're not a subscriber, I would love you to be so. Click the link in the box down below or click the link over here. That's going to do the same thing. And it just means that you won't miss any of the upcoming content. Thank you very much for watching. We'll see you back here again soon.